God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. If you would like to contact us by email, please email us at abundant.grace at att.net. Today, we will be going into a part two of our message series titled, Blotted or Not Blotted Out. Our main scripture text will be from the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5. I will read it from the God's Word version. Everyone who wins the victory this way will wear white clothes. I will never erase their names from the book of life. I will acknowledge them in the presence of my Father and his holy angels. So as we talked about last week, that we as Christians have our names written in the book of life. Sometimes it is noted to be the Lamb's book of life because Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. Today, we will open up part two with Revelation chapter three and verse two, which reads as follows from the King James Version, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. The God's word renders it, be alert and strengthen the things that are left which are about to die. I have found that what you are doing has not been completed in the sight of my God. My beloved, there are many churches that are existing, but are not doing the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They may be doing enough to get by. They may be having programs, but the Word of God is not being preached in its fullness. Therefore, people are weak and people are not getting saved. And by that, I mean there is no conviction in messages that are preached. So therefore, the Word of God has no effect on the people. Many people go to church to satisfy themselves. Many think that they have salvation because they belong to a church body. But that is not so. You must be born again. And that comes through repentance and receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord by believing that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven to where he is now seated at the right hand of God the Father in the power that God has given him and my beloved from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. So let's break down this verse from the King James Version. Be watchful, which means be alert, awake, be attentive and earnest. My beloved, which means don't be drowsy. Don't be part of a sleeping church. Awaken the church. Preach revival. Preach salvation. Preach new life. That's what needs to happen in our churches. We are to strengthen the things that remain, which are true piety that still lives and lingers among you. See, my beloved, although the word was not being preached in its fullness, it was still being preached. There were still good people in the church. There were people that wanted to grow. He is saying to hold on to these things. Don't give up. Change is coming. My beloved, if you are in a church where the truth isn't being preached, you need to move on to where you can be fed, convicted of your sinfulness, convicted of wrongdoing. You need to move on. There are many churches that preach the truth that don't just go through some formality. They preach the truth with power, with anointing. That is the church that you need to be in. My beloved, when the body of Christ is sick and diseased, life just lingers. They just go on from day to day. Go on from Sunday to Sunday. It's like they're just passing through and occupying their time. They're not healthy spiritually, and for sure they are not healthy physically. It's like they're ready to die. They seem to be ready to become extinct. They believe what is going on in the outside world, that the church has no power, that is a lie from hell. They sit in the church in fear. When they go out of the church, they do not evangelize. 
They're afraid to speak to the people about Jesus. Never be afraid to speak the truth. The truth that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. I preach it every Sunday without fail and without fear. My beloved, churches are full of religion and good deeds, but not full of the Holy Ghost. They are not bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. This must cease. Churches need to get back to their first love, which is Jesus Christ. Without the love for Jesus Christ, a church will not prosper. And by the way, their leaders are subject to the punishment that comes along with their failure to preach the word in truth. A verse also says, For I have not found thy works perfect before God. In other words, I have not found them complete or full. They come short of what is required or what church of what individual Christian is not this true. If the head is weak, the body is weak. If the truth isn't being preached in power, the individual Christian will not be strong. And this is what is happening. Church should never be church as usual. There is nothing usual about a church service. God moves in multitude ways. My beloved, once again, if your church isn't preaching the truth, if they're not preaching in power, they're not evangelizing, move on. This was true at the church of Sardis. And it is true in many churches, not only in America, but throughout the world. But judgment will come because when you turn from God, you don't strive to know more about God through Christ Jesus. You don't strive to walk in purity. You don't strive to walk in meekness, love, faith. God is going to move. Your country will suffer. The nations of the world will suffer. And this causes evil to be rampant. And let me say this, with this COVID situation, people have been falling away from the church, living in fear. Well, let me tell you this. A life of fear will not take care of you, will not protect you. Your only hope is in Jesus Christ. Churches need to be opened up again. My beloved, grocery stores are opened up. Bars are opened up. Restaurants are opened up. What's wrong with churches being opened up safely with cleaning, disinfecting, separation between members? What's wrong with that? My beloved, I know that People are on Facebook and Zoom with messages. They're preaching. But we need one another. We need to be close to one another. What I'm saying is being the same fellowship, praising God, sharing at a distance. That is possible. Let's try it today. Try it this Sunday. We have it here. We have no problem here. We are all separated. You can't see, but we are separated. We utilize good hygiene, good cleaning. The right air changes. The only one without a mask on is me. And I am preaching. But there's nobody in front of me right here in my area. I maintain the six foot rule. So my beloved, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 3 says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. That's from the King James. Now from the God's Word version, it reads, So remember what you received and heard. Obey and change the way you think and act. If you are not alert, I will come like a thief. You will not know when I will come. Let this be one to remind you of the situation today with COVID. My beloved, don't fall away. Let's get back to church. Let's get back to doing what God has called us to do. Don't walk in fear. Walk in truth. Read, study, and listen to the Word of God. Be firm. Put your total trust in God through Jesus Christ. Now remember, use safety practices, cleaning, wear protection, but be in church. If you can go shopping in the grocery store, you can go to a restaurant, you can go to a function, should you not be able to go to church on Sunday for an hour or so? Think about it. The church of Sardis was urged to hold 
onto the Christian truth that they had heard when they first believed in Christ. To get back to the basics of the faith, it's so very important to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to deepen our understanding of the Word of God. We can do this through careful study and prayer. No matter how much we learn, my beloved, we must never abandon the basic truths about Jesus Christ, that he was born of a virgin, he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, he's so got sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. Jesus will always be the Son of God, no matter what. And the sacrifice for our sins is permanent. It will not fade away. No new truth from God will ever contradict these biblical teachings. It talks about repent, which means be humbled before God and acknowledge your sins. He is telling the church to be humble and do what God has called them to do. Work together. Open yourself up to receive the grace of God. Allow others to receive the grace of God through the true and powerful preaching of the word of God with conviction. My beloved, he says to repent, which means turn from the wrong things you have been doing and get right. Enter through that narrow way. Walk down that narrow path. Preach the truth of the word of God. Be a good soldier for Jesus Christ. Wear the full armor of God. Preach in season, out of season. My beloved, it's time to get back to preaching, teaching, fellowship. It's time to get back. If you can go to work, if you can go to store, if you can go to everything else, you can go to church one day a week and listen for what God is saying to you. He speaks to the church and he speaks to the individual. Listen and pay heed to what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is saying. Then the verse says, If therefore thou shalt not watch, if you don't amend your ways, keep yourself from sinfulness, and look for opportunities to receive from God and to do good, he is going to come when you least expect it. And woe to you. Now, if you're a Christian, I'm not saying you're going to hell. I'm saying that you will lose rewards. Things will happen in your life that may not be too good. You may be under suppression. I have no idea what will happen. But I know, according to this verse, if you don't get back on track, things will not go right for you. He says, I will come on thee as a thief. My beloved, as a thief comes when he is not expected, so will our Lord come when you are not watchful. Because when you are not doing what Christ has told you to do, you are reckless in your faith. You will be occupied by the things of this world, by wars and rumors of wars, by pandemics, by hurricanes, blizzards. You'll be consumed with fear. That will not be good because you will be focusing on all these adversities instead of focusing on Jesus Christ coming back. When he comes back, will you be ready to receive him? Will you be awake? Will you be alert? That's a good question that only you can answer. I am saying, I will. I am ready. Whenever he comes, I will be waiting for him. Believe it. But will you be ready? The thief will not catch me off guard. The thief will not rob me because I have Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ will open my mind and my spirit to all that is going on. I will hear his voice. Will you? My beloved, Jesus is saying, I'm going to skip down to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 6. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Seven churches he was speaking to. Now he's speaking to thousands upon thousands of churches. I hope they're listening. The demand of universal attention finishes the message. Every word from God deserves attention from mankind. The usual caution and counsel carefully to attend to the things spoken to the members of that church in which every reader is more or less interested. You will either be on or off, depending on what is going on in your church. Now, if you have an ear to hear from the things of God, it's not being preached in your church, you need to move on. The eternal salvation of your soul depends upon it. 
If you are lost and you just remain in an unsaved state because you feel comfortable just going to church or doing your duty, you will spend eternity out of the presence of God in the lake of fire. So let me ask you this. If you are not saved, if you have never repented and received Christ as your Savior and Lord, a question for you. Are you going to be blotted out? Are you going to remain in the same state that you are? Or are you going to change your, the state of your soul and not be blotted out of the kingdom of God? Only you can answer that question. But today I want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. If you would like to do that, I want to lead you in a prayer. Now, you must be sorry for your sins, repent of your sins, believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, and is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and that he will return to judge the world of sin. If you want to believe that today, I want to lead you in a prayer. My beloved, please don't let your soul be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life, but let your soul be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is difficult to, to say because I have a heart for the lost. I want you, you who are watching this video, to not have your name blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. So won't you please pray this prayer with me. I'm asking you out of love. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today and it touched my heart. I know that if I died today, my name would be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. And I don't want that to happen. Therefore, I am praying this prayer and asking you to forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me. I don't want to go to hell when I die. I want to go to heaven to be with you. Please save me today. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, is now sitting at your right hand, Father God, the place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today, and I confess it and profess it right now, and believe that Jesus Christ has now become my Savior and Lord. And when I die, I will go to be with him in heaven forever. And I thank you for saving me today. I thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name, I praise you and thank you. Amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer, meant it from your heart today, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor, tell him what happened, ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then ask him to give you a Bible if you haven't one. Ask him to mentor you, to teach you all about your newfound faith in Jesus Christ. Then what I would like you to do is email me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact us through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or through our other website at www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. Or just Google me, Bishop Ramon Di Maria. Thank you for being with us today, my beloved. God is good, and God is saying today that he is going to come as a thief. So if you have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying today, listen. Thank you, my beloved. And for all of you that received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, welcome to the kingdom of God. Continue to watch us on YouTube. You can listen to us on Spreaker. We're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest. We're on different sites. So please, let me hear from you. God bless you and go with God.